Hello, Western Oregon sports fans, and welcome to this edition of Wolves Weekly. I'm joined today by head men, women's basketball coach Greg Bruce and a special guest joining us from the locker room today, Danielle Velando. Coach Bruce, we're able to have a pair of home games after it seemed like you were on the road for quite a long time there. Yeah, over a month, Danny. It was nice to play at home. Uh, Anchorage on Thursday, number 11 in the country, and then Fairbanks on Saturday afternoon. We got a split. Um, I was very happy with our effort against An Anchorage. I, obviously, we lost the game, but I thought our kids played extremely hard. We were very competitive, especially the first half. And I actually thought the game, uh, you know, there was two to nothing forever, our favor. And I thought that's kind of where we let the game get away. We had so many opportunities to score on them early in the game that we didn't take advantage of. And then they imposed their size and will on us down the stretch. But I was really happy with our effort. One of those players that was really able to stand up to that size a little bit and have a very good game against there is our special guest in the studio today, Danielle Bolando. How are you doing today, Danielle? I'm good. How are you? Doing very good. <laughs> Danielle, you came through with 14 points, one off your season high, and eight rebounds against Alaska Anchorage. How against that very big physical team were you able to get so many open looks? Um, well, I think it was they played a zone, and one of my favorite shots is the short corner. So I got those a lot and luckily made them. And you were able to really find that open shot a lot, but it, you really, she really helped keep the team in the game quite a bit during that first half. Talk to me a little bit about how you guys have been able to compete against these Alaska Anchorage schools, these um, Seattle Pacific schools. You've been with the school now for four years, and it seems to me, um, I've been around for three of them, you guys have got really a lot more competitive against these teams. Just talk to me how maybe the mentality has changed around the program, how you guys are able to compete and just hang in these games and even win a couple of them. Um, well, I know that this year we're more of like a gritty team. We really, we dive for balls more. We really concentrate on just working hard, every possession, all the defensive possessions. And um, like the past couple of years, we've been really, really talented, but I feel this year we have several different people in different positions that can contribute in any game. And as I want to echo Danielle's statements right there too. The, the grittiness of this team. You guys were able to win the first game of the uh, conference season, I believe it was by four points, and then by four points, and then by three points, starting off 3-0. and oh. And those are the ones that Danielle mentioned right there that you guys really have to grit through. And it's about determination, it's about will. Talk to me a little bit about how you guys have been able, I'm not saying, to turn that switch and able to get those loose balls and those ones that matter. Well, I think, I think Danielle's right. I think, uh, you know, her and Sarah, Sarah Zoller, they're the only, they're going to be the second and third player that have been in the Western Oregon women's basketball program for four years in a row since we've gone Division II 10 years ago. And just to have the continuity of those two being here, and then we had three sophomore guards that were freshmen last year that played an awful lot of minutes, started games, were in important contributions there. And because we got some continuity with those kids, and they've kind of all stepped up their game, and, and I think they've let the new players know that we can be competitive, we need your help, we can be competitive, but we're going to have to do it as a group. We don't have what I would consider the standout player that maybe we've had in the past, and I think that's made us better because everybody knows they have an opportunity to help us at somewhere down the road. We've been more physical, we've paid attention to more detail, we're a better passing team than we ever have been. So, you know, all in all, we're just more competitive on a nightly basis. And you talked right there about, you talked about the balance of the team right there, everybody being competitive, maybe not having that star. And that was really the case you guys had against, in your win against Alaska Fairbanks. Four players going double figures, including Danielle Bolanda, who gets 10 points to get 24 points for the weekend, which is a big one. Talk to me a little bit about Fairbanks, who is very opposite from what Alaska Anchorage is. Yeah, Fairbanks is a, uh, an improving program. They've been down for several years. They have a new young coach now who's brought organization and some discipline to their team. So they're going to get better. They beat Central Washington already. They had a pretty good game against at Seattle Pacific, only lost by like 15. So they're better than people think they are. We had a really strong half against them, opening half, and led by 20-plus. Second half, we backed off a little bit, uh, unfortunately, where our defensive intensity wasn't as high, and they went to a zone, and we didn't make as many shots as we normally do. So the game was a little closer than we would have liked. But all in all, we were able to get the win, and we had contributions from everybody. Uh, Roddy Peterson was in foul trouble. Danielle stepped up. Sarah Zoller made some critical threes down the stretch. Uh, Lori Clifford was able to penetrate the zone and get some points. Jamie Richardson had a couple three steals and some uh, driving layups for baskets early and also late. So it's nice when you don't have to depend on one kid and, and there's a number of players that can come in and contribute. 
Fantastic, Coach. Um, we'll get to see more of those teams. Um, you guys will be on the road this week, actually. Get to see more of those women. You guys are actually tied right now for third place in the GNAC. That win against Alaska Fairbanks moves you up to 5-3 and three in the conference. A very, very strong start off to the season. Actually, 5-2. Uh, and two. Sorry, 5-2. and two. I don't know why Sorry. I came with that one. I never should take a, put one in the loss column for you. I'm oh. sorry about that, Coach. Um, misread it off my sheet right here. You guys, this weekend will go on. Everybody thinks about the Alaska Anchorage that Alaska trip is being a very tough one, but you guys have another tough trip this weekend. You guys will start off on Thursday by being up at Billings. Talk to me a little bit about that road trip and just the Yellow Jackets in general. I actually, I personally think this is the harder road trip because there's more distance between Billings and Seattle, plus you can't, plus the quality of teams, the two added together are better than the quality of Anchorage and Fairbanks. Uh, Billings is up and down and they're, it, two weeks ago, they went into Seattle and beat the Falcons for only a second loss in eight years at home that Seattle Pacific's had. And then this weekend, they go on the road and lose at Central Washington and at Northwest Nazarene. They have a lot of talent. They have two Division I transfers. One of them is a 6'2 center who is extremely talented and skilled, shoots outside, posts up, drives. She's got the whole package. Kayla Ryan coming back, another 6'2 player. It's been here for three years. She's put up some really big numbers for Billings. Uh, Sarah McNamee was a, an all-star conference guard last year, one of the leading scorers in the conference. She's back. In fact, they didn't lose. The only player they lost was kind of a role player for them. And they've got their point guard, uh, Marquis, back from two years ago, who was an all-conference player as a sophomore. So they've got talent to boot. Sometimes they don't always bring their A game from a motivational standpoint. And we sure hope that happens on Thursday. But having lost two in a row, I don't think we can count on that. And then you guys will go over, um, take that long trip back to Seattle Pacific and have to face, as you mentioned, the team that's lost twice in eight years at home. And we're also playing them on their, quote, homecoming game Saturday at 1.30. They don't have football, so they have a winter homecoming, and it just happens to be against us. So I'm sure they'll all be fired up. Uh, I don't think, I, don't get me wrong, Seattle's very good and has been and will be, but they might not be quite as good as they have been in the past. But they've got two outstanding posts, uh, Sims, the kid from... Uh, uh, Portland High School there uh, is a very good athlete, has had a good season so far. Uh, Matheny, uh, no, that's not right. They're a uh, left-handed wing player. Uh, I'll get the name here in a minute. She's very, very talented as well. So, you know, two really good teams on the road, Danny, and we're going to have to be at our best. Well, we'd like to hear a little bit more over there from Danielle Belando and just hear a little bit more about what are the keys. Um, you Coach Bruce here has been able to scout this team multiple times, but as you mentioned, this is your fourth go-around against both these teams on the road and really um, basically your seventh go-around against them overall. What are some of the keys that West Oregon has to do in order to play competitively against Billings on the road? Well, against Billings, it's always a good game. Um, they run a zone a lot, so we need to work on that. We didn't do that well last weekend on it, so hopefully we can get our pass crisper and make sure we know where our teammates are at to get the good shots. And Coach Bruce mentioned that Seattle Pacific has a couple good posts, so we're thinking you're going to have to um, contribute on you along with your fellow posts. You're going to have to you know, step up a little bit on Saturday. Tough game. Um, not putting any pressure on it that way, but just always tough to play you know, against quality opponents. Talk to me about Seattle Pacific, who has been competitive and a very strong team, both in the GNAC and in the West region for many years, including all three, four that you've been here at Western Oregon? Well, in a lot of games, we're usually undersized, so hopefully, like against Anchorage, we can just grit it out like we always do, like us in the post, like Riley and I or Mel, and make sure the wings have a lot of pressure, so hopefully we can play well against them. And, we know, um, do you, and when you guys play something like that, do you guys sometimes have the game plan of maybe getting up and down the floor a little bit more to try to neutralize that post size. Um, we, you're a very versatile type of post. You can you know, put the ball on the floor a little bit, shoot from the outside a little bit where you're not just so much back to the basket type of post. Do you try to utilize that, you know, that strength in your game against somebody that maybe is a little bit bigger than you, a little bit stronger than you? Yeah, our goal is to always get up and down the court as much as we can, and our posts are sometimes more athletic than the other team, but when they're taller and have the same athleticism as us, it's a little bit more difficult, but 
That's usually our goal to get them tired. And you guys have seemed to be do a pretty good job with that this year. Um, Danielle maybe helping out in that one. Riley Peterson moves pretty well. And then those you talked about the sophomore guards. Um, Sarah Zoller being the, the senior leader, one of them on the team. But the sophomore guards, you guys have really been able to get the ball up and down the court. Um, you've mentioned that to me in the past. That's kind of what, what you hope to be. But how, how have you guys been able to, along with the maturation of your, of your student athletes, been able to do that a little bit better this year? Well, you know, uh, Danielle and Sarah have been in the system for four years now. And those three guards we're talking about, Jamie Richardson, Lori Clifford, and Hannah Whitsett, this is their second go around, second year, sophomores but they played an awful lot last year and they kind of know the system and they all know, like Danielle says, we're all undersized. We know that if we slug it out at the half court, we're gonna be at a disadvantage. So it's really a premium for us to get up and down the floor, try to extend our pressure to full court so we can get some turnovers and hopefully some easy shots, easy baskets, which we would be able to do at times. But we just have to, we have to make that a goal of ours because if we get in a half court, walk it up type game against bigger teams as both Billings and Seattle are, it's really, we're really playing into their hands. Well, Coach, um, unfortunately, you guys are not home this weekend. We'll have to wait a little while longer to be able to watch you guys at home all the way until the 29th. But however, you, we can still, fans can still follow Western Oregon through the video stream, which is available through the WU Wolves website. But it's actually in a partnership with penalanic.com and the GNAC. So make sure you go to penalanic.com and follow the Wolves on the road this weekend as they face the Yellow Jackets on Thursday and then the Falcons on Saturday. Thank you all for watching this edition of Wolves Weekly, and thanks for joining me today, Coach Bruce. My pleasure. Thank you.